Hi guys, right, I've got the phones disconnected this time, so there should be no disturbances. I'm just waiting for a CityLink guy to turn up for a parcel collection, but hopefully he won't be turning up during the video. I just thought I'd show you my take on using the STC-1000. That's uh, this unit here. I've actually fitted two into this mild steel project box. Uh, the box itself is about uh, 23 pounds off of eBay. The STC 1000s are about 14, 15 pounds. You can buy them from the UK through eBay. Everything else I've used is just some black plugs, some black rubberized cable, some black sockets, and that's about it, really. I've used black uh, because the wallpaper uh, is black behind the tank, the tank's black, the base is black, so I've managed to buy a black shelf. It's one of those hidden ones where you don't see any of the fittings and the project box just happens to fit on it absolutely perfectly. In fact, the project box, box is exactly the same width as the black shelf and that came from uh, Dunelm. So my idea uh, was to have two heaters in the tank. The first one, which we'll call it this left hand side one, will only operate up to 23 degrees C. After that, the, uh, the, the heater's thermostat will, will obviously turn it off. As the water's generally about 24, 25, this heater should never be on. The right hand side one will be the main heater which is on I think you know sort of 24 25 I can't remember the exact readings I'm at the other side of the room so I can't tell you that but I will use the heater's own thermostatic control to maintain the tank temperature at say let's say 24 and this will only override that if the tank temperature rises too high. So let's say the element, so the, so the heater that's being used all of the time fails and it fails with it on. The temperature will rise and once it gets to two degrees above the normal tank temperature this will turn the power to the heater off. Okay so we've got over temperature protection through this but I'm not using this to actually control the temperature. So there will be no annoying clicking on and off from the inbuilt relays on this, you know, on a on a half hourly basis. My heater on its own can control the temperature to a one degree accuracy over 24 hours. So the lowest we get is 23.5 and the highest is 24.5, which I think is pretty good. So I don't really see any need for an external controller. Uh, for that point of from that point of view, so we've got over temperature protection built in to here on the main heater. If this heater should fail, uh, this will obviously go off. Or let's say the power supply fails to this. Obviously, this will be on a battery backup at uh, at some point. But let's say the heating element fails completely. Normally, you'd only know that the tank was too cold when other systems that you've got, like Senai, alert you to the fact. But when this fails, the temperature will drop over uh, you know, a number of hours, one or two degrees. And then this one that has been set two degrees lower than the normal tank temperature will then uh, kick in and the heater will start to heat. So again, we've got redundancy built in and over temperature protection on both of the heaters and that's pretty much it really um, they're both let me just show you the wiring so what what I've done we have two okay, plug cables um, that will go into normal sockets or perhaps UPS whatever you think is necessary and both of these socket uh, both of these plugs supply each of the sockets here you'll notice that there's two cables in the sockets. What I've done is I've wired up the plug to the earth and neutral, but the live does not go to the live pin. The live is joined inside this to another wire in this second cable that goes 
up to the STC 1000 to the relay and it only allows the power through the contacts obviously when it says heat down here so we've got live not on the pin but coming out on this second cable into the STC 1000 only when the contacts the relay contacts are closed is that live allowed to come out back down the same cable and then it goes to the live pin on uh, the socket obviously the same is repeated that side just have a quick actually no I'll just show you the operation of it obviously you've got tank temperature wires and if I've picked the right one up I'll just warm it very slightly yeah I picked the wrong one up unfortunately let me find the correct one yeah so we're looking at the right hand side and this is the temperature sensor for it this white plug is actually powering that lamp whereas normally each heater would be plugged into here obviously so if I just warm this up just a little bit they're not super fast to react there so I've set it at 24 degrees and the power's now gone off to the lamp if it goes up to about 25 or 26 the cooling relay will be activated there you go at 24.5 uh, and that could then turn on uh, fans chiller whatever you've got connected at the moment I'm not using it but I can if I want to add that feature later there is a half degree offset that's the lowest you can have so when this drops back down in a minute to 24 it won't start heating instantly it would allow it to drop to 24.5 and only then will it close the heat contact relay um, and repeat the process but don't forget of course I'm only using this for over temperature protection day to day the normal heaters th uh, thermostat will be doing all of this and this is purely for uh, over temperature protection but of course you could turn the thermostat on the heater up to you know say 80 and let this do all of the work but uh, I wouldn't want to do that because I don't like hearing these clicks all the time and uh, my way this is only uh, used in uh, in emergencies when a heater would fail either on or off unfortunately it's quite warm in here today and that is taking its time to <laughs> drop back down so you'll see now the cool light has gone off now so it's not trying to cool the water but nor is it heating it at the moment either you'll see it'll have to get down to 23.5 the heat light will come on and then you'll notice the light come on uh, in a moment as well so point one to go there you go obviously you can set this to whatever you like there's four parameters that you can adjust the set temperature that you want to achieve, the offset, uh, and uh, you can set on the function three of what they call compressor delay time. That's if you're uh, actually using it uh, for refrigeration purposes. And the F4 is the temperature calibration value. So you can, if this is you know massively out to other equipment you've got, you can say say my very accurate thermocouple says it's 23.4 I can actually adjust this up by one degree to match that but I don't think the temperature itself is the important thing it's the fact that it's set a couple of degrees above the temperature of the aquarium heater um, so you know that's pretty much the operation that, as I've set it up obviously there's variations of that you can just have one controlling the temperature of the heater but it seemed to make sense to me to have that sort of redundancy with the second heater and the over temperature protection on both of them it's got to be pretty unlikely for the the heater to fail and then this to fail as well in the on position 
Um, it's more likely that it would fail uh, off, hopefully, <laughs> and not boil everything. So that's that. Uh, we'll just have a quick look inside. I've really just lashed this up uh, for the moment because I bought the wrong size. I was going to do it all nicely with um, cable glands and everything, but these are just way too big. And I don't have a 19mm high-speed steel drill to drill through the box, but it's I mean, it's pretty over the top for uh, the cables I've used. Um, yeah, so if we just lift the lid off, we'll just see what we've done. The wiring is easily accessible here. It's all labelled. You've got the mains in on the right. You've then got your uh, sensor. And then you've got the output to the heater and the alarm, if um, alarm or cooler, whatever you're connecting it to there. And the labels are all on here. The hardest bit, I think, was cutting these uh, rectangles out. What I did on the uh, bench drill, I've just drilled into each corner and used a jigsaw with a metal blade and cut them out roughly and then use the metal file just to finish them off just turn this round so yeah that's it really as I say this is uh, just rubber grommets and cable ties just to hold them in place temporarily until I get the cable strain relief uh, things from eBay and that's all there is to it really uh, you probably should earth this as it is a metal cabinet in a metal box so that's uh, that will be done at some point when this is all tidied up and finished but uh, overall I think that looks absolutely fine it will give me redundancy and over temp uh, protection the other good thing about uh, these if I am um, if I've wired these together so they're only on one plug you could wire them separately if you uh, felt inclined you know perhaps you could have the uh, main one on the battery backup uh, and the other one wired in to your main so you've got you know a redundancy in the power supply as well probably going a bit over the top here but the good thing with these are if they are turned on like they are at the moment if you should get a power cut which I'll just simulate by unplugging everything the next time the power comes back on they will actually fire up in the correct mode that they were switched off in which is absolutely perfect that's exactly what you want a really good feature you can turn them off if you uh, want to you just need to press and hold the standby button for three seconds and they will go off of course you would never do that under normal circumstances in this marine setup so yeah a really useful feature that it comes back on on its own after a power cut and i guess we're pretty much done i have noticed i think about a half a degree in difference between the two probes they're in different places at the moment that's why you've got a bigger gap but if we keep them together in fact I tested this overnight I just put them together on the table like that and there was a 0.4 to 0.5 of a degree difference again it's irrelevant it doesn't matter what the actual figures are so long as they're operating a couple of degrees above where you have the heaters set just for that protection uh, so that's it uh, any questions you can Contact me through uh, YouTube and I uh, hope that was helpful. It's just my take on using a couple of these SDC 1000s and I'll catch you later.